Hey guys, Trevor Boone from Emerald City Guitars, and my pick of the day is this 1976 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe in blue sparkle finish. So this is the first time that I've ever had um, a Les Paul with this finish in. You don't see these colors or custom colors at all on many Gibson solid bodies. Um, they did some cool options on the Trini Lopez, some 330s you'll see in burgundy sparkle, but it's pretty rare to see something uh, this flashy on a Gibson. They stayed pretty traditional with their finishes. About 231 are apparently made or were produced with this finish. And it's just a really cool kind of glam rock, a little bit flashy, but you know, it kind of it kind of just encompasses that that time and bright lights on stage and bands like Quiet Riot or whatnot. And uh, the time, I think the peak era of Les Pauls too. So the Les Paul Deluxe, let's talk a little bit about that. That came out in 1968. And what really sets it apart for me at first glance is gonna be the mini humbuckers or New York humbuckers they're referred to, I think rarely, but you'll hear that every once in a while. So it's about the size of P90, fits right in there, and it has some pretty similar qualities or properties to the P90. To me, they've always had this really cool mid-range growl, not as full body as a humbucker, but it really does hit that frequency you wanna hit with the guitar in the mix. So they went through a couple different transitions. Um, they always seem to have this more, you know, slim profile, three-piece neck. They did have a three-piece body, the early ones at least, with maple in the middle and two sides mahogany. This is full mahogany by this point. And uh, it's just, you know, pretty good weight. I think it's 10 pounds, five ounces. Yeah, just a really true, full-on glam rock Les Paul in a rare color. So the 70s is an interesting time. A lot of people talk about the quality control of instruments at that time. I've seen good guitars in the 50s and bad guitars in the 50s. I think the same thing goes for every era. The 70s is not an exception. There's some good guitars that came out of this era and this is one of them, man. It feels really, really good. It's set up really nice. The pickups are loud. So 100% original example, uh, 10 pounds, five ounces. This guitar is pretty clean. There's a couple things that I'd note that there's some belt buckle rash here. You know, pretty typical for a guitar of this age. Uh, no repairs or modifications. Um, there is one mark here where it looks like the guy back in the day was just using this a ton. The tone knob down here has a little bit of wear, but the finish has pretty much gone completely down to the natural wood there. So someone might have just been swelling and using their finger, had a ring on. It's hard to say, but that does exist, but it seems to be you know, from the guy's hand, which is, which is kind of cool. He played the heck out of this, but um, overall took good care of it. I think he knew he had a special guitar here. Uh, comes with the original case. I always love this era of cases. They're sleek, they're black with the, with the cool purple velvet interior. They just look nice and fit the guitar nicely. So it's a cool guitar to get into. That is, uh, I think, kind of that mid-range price, you know, as far as getting into a really collectible instrument. Um, but not completely breaking the bank. Anyways, so today we're gonna demo this guitar through kind of your tried, true, and trusted 1997 USA made Hot Rod DeVille. This is an amp that I'm happy to have as a backline if I go to a gig, I'm not bringing mine. I know how to use this. Kind of hits all the basic Fender tones. You have reverb, 410, so plenty of stage volume. And yeah, they're 750 bucks, they're great. We're gonna plug this guitar through this amp and show you how they both sound. Clean it up a little bit.
So there you have it. My pick of the day was this rare blue sparkle finish, 1976 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.